Welcome to the Labory video training series. In this installment, we'll be demonstrating the anorectal manometry system. Hi, I'm Mark McGee. I'm one of the clinical consultants with Labory Medical Technologies. And today we're going to be going over the procedure of anorectal manometry, frequently just called ARM, A-R-M. We're, today we're going to be going over the preparation of the patient, the setup the, of the equipment, the use of the software, the acquisition of the data, and then at the end we'll review how to print out the report. We're going to be going over the three different components of the test today. One will be the uh, electromyography or the EMG of the anal sphincter. Um, we'll be doing different maneuvers to test how well the sphincter is functioning and if the patient is able to control it. We'll be going over anorectal manometry, which will be measuring the, the function of the uh, anal canal and its relationship with the different sensations. Plus, we'll be reviewing and testing the prudental nerve to see if it is functioning correctly and how it innervates and affects the activity of the sphincter. Go ahead at this time and gather up the various supplies that you'll be needing. You'll be needing the anorectal manometry catheter, lubricant, a 60cc lure lock syringe, a drape or hospital gown, exam gloves, adhesive tape, gauze pads. Educate your patient prior to arrival to the test on the various things that he or she will be um, experiencing during the test. They will frequently be told to take one, possibly two fleets enemas prior to arriving to the test. Some physicians will even have them perform a fleets enema actually in the clinic just moments before the arm study is done. They need to be informed that they will have a small tube or a catheter about the size of a soda straw inserted into the rectum. The test is pain free. There is no discomfort with it. There'll be various sensations, but it should not be uncomfortable. And also after the test, they will be able to return to their normal activities. No restrictions afterwards. The patient should then be escorted to the examination room, instructed to disrobe from the waist down. They then should lay down on the exam table on their left side. They should draw their knees up towards their chest and they should be appropriately draped to, to maintain their privacy. Now that the patient is prepared, let's go ahead and move to the software and start our procedure. To start the program, we're going to double click on the Dorado icon. You always want to make sure that this little red circle up here in the, in the upper left hand corner disappears. We need it to be so that the um, red circle is gone. That means the two components of the computer are speaking to each other. We're going to start with the EMG recruitment. We'll click on this um, uh, button on the desktop. At this time, we'll I'll go ahead and enter the patient data. Um, you have to put in a medical record number, a first and last name, gender, and birth date. Those are the required fields. The others you can fill in if you wish, uh, but are not necessary. Go ahead at this time and attach the EMG electrodes to the patient. Again, as any time you're doing EMG, make sure the skin is prepared well. The skin needs to be clean, dry, and intact. The EMG patches should be placed on opposite sides of the anus um, at 2 and 10 o'clock and should be as close to the anal verge as possible. The ground patch should be placed on a bony prominence. Once the patches are properly placed, we're going to ask the patient to rest for a few seconds. We'll ask them to squeeze while we're doing the test, plus we'll ask the patient to push or to bear down like they're trying to ha have a bowel movement. We'll click the run button up here in the upper right hand corner. You can see we're getting our tracings now. We'll ask the patient to just, you know, sit quietly to make sure everything's working correctly. And then while they're just laying there, we're going to click the rest button. 
and again it's going to count off for about five seconds or so and the patient will just be resting. They don't even need to know that you're doing it. Then we're going to ask the patient to squeeze, to squeeze their anus like they're trying to prevent um, you know, gas from ex being expelled. So you're going to squeeze. You should see an increase of the EMG like that. And then we're, once that's done, you can see the changes in colors. And then we're going to ask the patient to push and bear down. And you actually should see a quieting of the EMG activity as the internal sphincter actually relaxes. And then it's a good idea to do the same thing again. Ask the patient just to uh, lay there quietly and rest. You should see some EMG activity, but not necessarily a lot. And then again, have the patient bear down and squeeze, squeezing their, their anus like they're trying to keep gas from expelling. And then to push like they're trying to have a bowel movement. Again, you should see a relaxation of the, um, of the EMG activity. Then we'll click the stop button. At this point, it's a good idea just to go ahead and print it off. All we're looking for are the graphs. We don't have any actual numbers that we're looking for. So the easiest way to print this is go up here to File, Print Study, and we're going to do a UDS report, even though we're just measuring the EMG, and all we're interested in is the graph pages. Nothing else needs to be checked. We want one page graph, and uh, then we click OK. Let's go ahead and start the interrupted manometry procedure now. On the software, we'll go ahead and click the arm button. That brings up the various channels. We have posterior in channel one, the right segment of the uh, catheter we'll be measuring in channel two, anterior and left. You can see there and at the very bottom, we have um, average. At this point, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and enter your patient information. The, um, the numbers need to be unique as well as uh, the patient's name. You can pull up tests from um, former patients and add their names and numbers. We'll pick a male and was born in May on the 9th in 19, oh, we'll say 73. We can also default in the physician's names in this section right here. With the transducers in the open position, attach the connectors from the arm catheter to the appropriately colored transducer. The connections must be tight. You want to make sure that the transducers are in the open position. This is very critical. They must be in the open position when you click the zero all button. The only time you should click the zero all button is when the transducers are in the open position. By doing though, it zeroes or balances out your transducers to atmospheric pressure. So they must be in the open position so that they're open to air. As you can see on the right hand side here, all our transducers are now at zero. Lubricate the anorectal manometry catheter and gently insert into the anus at least to the eight centimeter mark. It is very important that you make sure that the black line is towards the patient's posterior side, which is their spine. So a nice little mnemonic to remember is make the line to the side of the spine, the line to the spine. Click Run to start your recording. At this point, charge your transducers. You will then start getting pressure readings you know, from uh, each channel. The numbers will be close, but they will not be exactly the same. They do vary a little bit. Pull the catheter back to the five centimeter mark. We want to put the five on the catheter at the anal verge. At this point, we're just going to ask the patient to rest there quietly. I click the five centimeter rest button. You can see how it's flashing here on the buttons at the top. Plus, we're getting the, the yellow section um, on the graph. Once that they're done with that five seconds, then we're going to ask the patient to squeeze. We want them to give us as hard a squeeze as they can um, using just the muscles of their anus. It, um, 
It's like if they were trying to prevent gas from leaking out or trying to prevent a, a bowel movement. So just go ahead and have them squeeze. You're going to coach them. Say squeeze, 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 squeeze. Keep going, keep going. That's it. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing as hard as you can. Good, good, good. That's real good. Hold it, hold it, and relax. And then that'll bring them back down to, you know, the baseline again. That can be very hard for the patient to do. It's difficult to, to um, hold you know, the, the muscles tight like that. And just so that you know, we're simulating this using a pressure chamber. So these ch uh, pressures are looking kind of odd. This is not exactly how you would see it. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the catheter out to the four centimeter mark. And at that point, the pressures should go a little bit higher because we're getting farther um, into the anal sphincter. So once you're at the four centimeter mark, again, somebody is holding it so it doesn't migrate in and out and we have the black line towards the spine. Then we're gonna click the four centimeter mark and you can see that it continues the flash there on our screen. And um, then once that's done, you're gonna ask the patient to squeeze. Go ahead and squeeze, tighten your anus. That's it, keep squeezing, keep squeezing, keep squeezing. We're gonna ask them to squeeze tighter and tighter don't let it go, don't let it go, that's it, good, 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 don't let go, and relax. And then our 10 seconds is up. Go ahead and um, let them relax and they can bear down a little bit. Have them push again to sort of reset their pelvic floor. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and pull it out to about the three centimeter mark. We'll have the three centimeters right at the anal verge. The pressure should be a little bit higher. And again, now we're going to have them rest. Go ahead and just, and just have them rest quietly there while the pre, you know, we're, they're uh, measuring those pressures. Then the 10 seconds is up. Go ahead and squeeze, 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 squeeze. Give me a big tight squeeze. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's it. Almost done, almost done. And relax. And then the patient can relax. and. Quit squeezing and again we'll have them um, push a little bit to reset that pelvic floor. We're going to pull the catheter out, same thing, out to the two centimeters. Once they're, um, you're there and, and it's secure, go ahead and have them rest. Again, they don't even need to know you're doing it, but they're just resting there quietly. After the 10 seconds is up, we'll have them squeeze again. Okay, so instruct them, go ahead and squeeze, 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 keep squeezing, that's it, keep squeezing, don't let go, don't get let go, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and after that 10 seconds, you can have them relax. Very good, and it comes back down to baseline. One more time, we're going to tell them, we're going to move it to the one centimeter mark, have them relax and just rest there, resting quietly, doing real good, almost done, you can tell them with this hard part. And again, we're going to ask them to squeeze now. Go ahead and give me a big tight squeeze. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We're almost done. Good. We're almost done. And relax. And now we're done with that segment. Now, while we're doing all this, you have to be aware of what's going on. We want to make sure that you are, are determining which, at which location the patient was having the most pressure generated. And if you can see, this first section right here is our, our, what we just did. So that's at one centimeter. This section here is at the two centimeters. This was at the three centimeters. So this section right here, section two, they generated the highest amount of pressure in all the different channels. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to advance the catheter back into the rectum, and we're going to do the RARE test. RARE stands for Rectal Anal Inhibitory Reflex. We will be using the same catheter. Attach a 60 cc syringe to the stopcock. With 30 cc's of air in the stopcock, we're going to, again, it's real critical important that you maintain the position of the catheter. We want to make sure that the, high pr the catheter is at the high pressure zone. If it was two, cen two centimeters, we want to make sure that the two centimeter mark is at the anal verge. It will take two people at this point because one person must hold the catheter to keep it from migrating. The other person is going to be um, managing the syringe. Click the 30cc rare button on the control panel. You will note that the 30cc the button starts to flash. At this point, instruct your 
assistant to go ahead and blast 30 cc's of air into the catheter and then pull it back as quickly as you can. We are watching to see if the, the rare response occurs. You can see that the, the, the pressure will go up, it'll come back down below baseline and then come back to baseline just like that. If you see that, the rare is present. We'll click the, the 30 cc button again a box will pop up and ask you, was the result absent or present? Click present and we're done. Once you have a positive rare, you don't need to go any further. We have it elicited. If you do not get a response at this point, then we're going to go up to a higher volume in the, ca in the balloon. We're going to then maybe put uh, 40 cc's of air into the syringe. We'll click the 40 cc rare button. We'll go ahead and quickly in, inject the air into, this, into the balloon and then let it um, pull it back out quickly. If we see the rare again, we can click 40cc, click present, and we're done. Just to reiterate, once you see the rare, you do not need to do it again. If you find it at 30cc, you do not need to do it again at the 40. But if it's absent both times, then you need to go to higher volumes in your syringe. It will be up to the physician how far he or she wishes to go. Your syringe only holds 60 cc's. You may only want to go up to 60 cc's. Um, other places maybe want to go to higher volumes. I've seen one location that went as high as 140 cc's in their balloon. But again, that will be dependent upon what the physician wishes to do. Measuring the sensations is the next portion of the test. This will be done by injecting air into the rectal balloon and asking the patient what sensations they feel. The three sensations are, are, are defined simply as the first one is the first sensation. We want to know when they first feel like they're starting to fill up, like there's something going on in the, in the rectum. The, the next sensation is urgency, when they have an urgency or a desire, when they would normally get up to go have a bowel movement and then we're going to fill, get to the point where they have their maximum tolerance. We want to fill their rectum until they have a strong desire to have a defecation. Okay. The syringe is left on the stopcock. The catheter will be inserted to at least the six centimeter mark. We want to make sure the rectal balloon is all the way into the rectum. The assistant will then slowly begin injecting air into the balloon. Now we don't have to go real slow, but just at a moderate pace. And you're going to be watching how much air is going to be inserted. Once the patient starts to say, hey, I'm starting to feel something in the rectum, we, re we then look at the syringe and find out how much air has been put in. Let's say it's at 50 cc's. We go ahead and click first sensation on the uh, control panel and a box will pop up asking you what the volume of the air is at that point, And you simply insert the, the value at that point and click OK. You then continue to in, fill the balloon. Once you've got a full syringe full of air in, you've got to turn your stopcock so that you close the air off to the balloon so that the air doesn't escape. Refill your syringe with another 660 cc's and then start to infuse more um, air into the balloon until they give you, they have an urgency feeling, until they tell you they feel urgent, that they need to have a bowel movement. Measure at that point what the volume of air is that you've injected. So let's say it's at 80 cc's. Go ahead and click the urge button on the control panel, enter 80 cc's, and then click OK. We keep filling the balloon and we keep injecting the air into the balloon using the same procedure of using the stopcock, you know, to fill in uh, your syringe again until they tell you they have their maximum tolerance, that they feel they can just hold no more. Record what that volume is. Let's say it's 150 cc's. We'll go ahead and click max tolerance, enter the value 150, and then click OK. At this point, we're essentially done. You can go ahead and deflate the balloon. You can just take the syringe off and the balloon will um, um, deflate passively or you can use the syringe and go ahead and aspirate the air out. One last component to this test includes the expulsion test. It requires, again, keeping the catheter at roughly the six centimeter location. Uh, and we're going to now 
insert approximately 50 cc's of air into the rectal balloon. We will simply be asking the patient to try to expel it. So whatever method they need to do it at home, however they do it at home, that's what we're going to ask them to do here. We're going to click on the expulsion test button. You'll notice that it starts to flash. You'll go ahead and ask the patient to bear down, to push, whatever they need to do to expel that balloon. Some locations I've seen do it with the patient laying on their side. Some locations will actually have the patient get up into a sitting position or actually go into the toilet and ask them to attempt to, um, to expel that catheter. And it's a simply, did they do it? Yes or no. If they've done it, then we go ahead and um, click the expulsion test. We're going to then um, say how much water or air we had in the balloon. We'll say 50 cc's because that's what we did. And then the result is either expelled or not expelled. And then click OK. And at that point, we are essentially now done with this portion of the testing. Let's go ahead and stop our test now. We're going to click the stop button followed by the save button and save the data. Next we'll go ahead and print the report. We're going to go up to file, print study. We're going to do a UDS report even though it is an ARM report. We'll click graph pages and report pages. We'll click the, uh, your the ARM events down at the bottom, removing event summary and URA. Then we click OK, and the report will print. Next, we're going to be reviewing the prudental nerve motor latency testing. This test is using the EVOC software on our library system and is used to assess the competency of the prudental nerve. This test is usually done in conjunction with the anorectomanometry um, testing as we just reviewed. Um, it is conducted by giving a small stimulation of electricity through the prudental nerve and then measuring how long the impulse takes to get, get to the anus. That then allows us to determine if there is um, a delay or an injury to the prudental nerve, which can lead to a variety of anal um, complications. Patient preparation is very simple because it's done immediately after the anorectal manometry and so the patient will still be on their left side and uh, there's no other additional preparation that needs to be conducted. The test uses the St. Mark's electrode and um, gloves and lubricant. That is essentially all that is needed to conduct this test. The procedure requires the use of the St. Mark's electrode cable and the St. Mark's electrode. There are silver uh, markings on the tip of the catheter that need to plug into the St. Mark's electrode. If it's put in upside down, it won't work. So you've got to make sure that it's put in the proper way that, and it just simply slides in there. Um, we will also then need to take the grounding electrode and attach to it a surface electrode just like we did with the anorectal manometry and apply this to the uh, bony prominence on the patient's hip. The St. Mark's electrode is applied to the physician's glove. It is real important that this little dot is on the glove on the surface of the finger there that where he'll be touching the nerve and then these electrodes here are placed around the finger. This is the proper attachment of the St. Mark's electrode to the physician's glove. Notice where the stimulus electrode is. It's on the pad of the index finger and then these two tabs must wrap around the index finger and able to get the proper location when you're actually doing the test. It's also a, a handy idea to just go ahead and put a piece of tape on the, the far end of the electrode that just helps stabilize it when the physician's doing the exam. Now that the electrode is in proper position, we're going to apply lubricating jelly to the index finger to ease insertion of the finger into the anus. It is critical that the St. Mark's electrode is placed directly on top of the prudental nerve on both the left and the right side. Here's Dr. Jamie Merrill to, to explain to you the proper technique of finding the location. Hello, my name is Jaime Mayoral. I'm a colorectal surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. I'm here to uh, demonstrate how I do the prudental nerve latency and I'd like to start with this model to demonstrate 
how the patient is placed. The patient is placed usually in the left lateral cubitus position. I take my index finger after pl placing the St. Mark's uh, uh, stimulator on it and then first do the rectal exam, place it posteriorly, touching the coccyx, and then rotating it approximately 90 degrees over the levators and then hook it, hooking it so that I can get uh, the pudendal nerve. The key to this test is making sure your index finger is placed all the way as far as it can go. That way you'll be sure to identify the pudendal nerve. Once you identify it on one side, either the right or the left, whichever protocol you'd like to use, you switch it back to the coccyx, identify that landmark, and then go again posteriorly, uh, posteriorly and off to the side 90 degrees and ident again hook in your finger so as to identify the pudendal nerve. I think the biggest uh, mistake uh, physicians make when trying to identify the pudendal nerve is that the finger is not placed uh, correctly all the way into the anus. If it's placed distally, too far distally, it's not going to identify the pudendal nerve. Again, it has to be placed uh, more proximally to further identify the pudendal nerve. Let's go ahead and get the software ready for ac data acquisition. Double click the Evox icon. It'll go through its security checks. Enter patient information. You built, will be required to enter um, the medical record number, a patient f um, first and last name, gender, and birth date. Click OK. On the far right hand side of the screen, you will see where it says amplitude. This is the amount of energy that will be delivered during each of the stimulations. It's defaulted at five. Um, that's for safety reasons. But for Evox, we will want to start the test at roughly 15 and see where it goes from there. The different buttons, the, this button right here where it says one, will give one stimulation and only one stimulation when you push it. This one down, the one below it will give two rapid stimulations, one just boom, boom, one right after another. But the one that we're going to want to be using is this one down here that gives us two plus. It will give one stimulation every second or so, one right after another, one and then another and then another. Um, it will give up to 50 stimulations. This will allow you time to um, f the, the physician to find the proper landmark, the, the nerve, and get the waveform that he needs. I recommend over here with, for the XY axis to change the X axis to 3 and the Y axis to um, 100. You might even want to try 50, but for right now let's just go with 3 and 100. The, up here in the upper left hand corner you can see the left and the right prudental nerve stimulations. Um, we will, by default, we always start with the left side, and, but you can choose either side that you want. We will then go ahead and it's a good idea, I'd like to do one stimulation and when you do that you'll see that it comes up in the middle, it says waiting for stimulation. Stimulation, then it gives you one waveform. If you've got a good waveform at that time, you can just go ahead and do another one and, and those could be your two waveforms. However, most people aren't that adequate, you know, and find it initially. So we're going to go to the multiple stimulation mode over here. This will again, it's going to give you one um, stimulation right after another. It gives you the one on the bottom and it moves it up. And you can see the numbers counting way over here on the far left hand side. In this mode, we're allowed to then, you are able to then move the electrode until you find the location of the nerve. You can see how I'm moving it around on our subject here. We're getting different nerve, you know, impulse readings until you find the ones that you like. And you find two in a row. And I kind of like that right there, so we're going to stop there. There's a stop button up here in the upper right hand corner. Since we're here on the left side, I recommend that we just go ahead and mark our electrodes right now. I'm going to pick these two right here in the middle. I'm going to do a right click inside of this particular channel and I'm going to enter event one. 
I'm going to grab that event marker. I put the mouse over the top of it and do a left click. It grabs it and moves it. And you can see as I move that, the little arrow on that line um, follows the line of the waveform. What we want to see is we want to put that right at the end of the plateau. You can see right there, if I move just to the right one more time, it starts to descend down that plateau. We want to put it right about there where it's just starting. Then I'm going to do another left click and it parks it there. Now we're going to do the same thing on this waveform here. And I will say these are not the greatest waveforms, but it's going to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're looking for. I did a right click there and I'm going to do, a, you know, to place the, elect the uh, event marker, I'm going to do a left click on it so that I can move it. And again, I'm looking for when that arrow starts to slope down. I'm going to say right about there. And you can see that these two pretty much match pretty much the same. This top waveform is much better than the second one I did because you see the spike from when the stimulation occurred. It swoops up, we get a plateau, and then it start the, the waveform takes off from there. It's this plateau period is what we're looking for. Okay, now we're going to do the right side. You can see up here at the top it says the right predental nerve. We're going to be going there um, doing the right nerve. The doctor will have um, moved his finger on inside the anus, inside the rectum to the, to the right predental nerve. We'll also have to go back down here to the XY axis. We should change the X back to 3 and the Y back to, to 100. Um, after the physician has his proper location determined, then we're going to go ahead and start the stimulation again. Tell the patient that they might feel something. It might feel a little funny down there. And here we go. We're going to have our different stimulations. You can see they stack on top of each other. And we're going to move back and forth until we get right on that nerve. You can see we've got some pretty robust stimulations this time. See, we're getting multiple ones just exactly the same again. You can see how it stays there. So we're going to stop the stimulation here. You can see all these are looking pretty much the same. Along the left side here, you can see we've got our stimulation artifact. Then we get this plateau, and then it takes off. So we're going to take these top two, just like we did before. Right click, event one, left click on the event marker, move it until it starts to deflect. So we're going to go right about there. Uh, we're going to go down to this next channel, event one, left click on the event marker and move it until it starts to you know, go down again, right about there. And you can see again that these event markers are pretty much the same. Now I'll tell you that right now we are not actually stimulating a prudental nerve. We're doing a, uh, uh, an ulnar nerve on somebody's arm. And so up here at the top, you can see these um, event markers, these markers up here at the top are represent time units. And so we're at two, excuse me, three um, microseconds here. That is a little long for a prudental nerve. Normally it's going to be closer to two here. But this is still the type of pattern that you're going to want to be seeing. You're looking for this plateau and then see where the nerve takes off. Essentially, once you have done both the left and the right side, you are finished. You can go ahead and let the patient clean up. And then we're going to go ahead and at this point then and just print it. Way over here on the far right hand side it says print. And it's literally as simple as just clicking the button. The waveforms that it's going to print are only going to be the ones that you have marked. Even though we've got you know close to a hundred different waveforms, we're only going to see the ones that actually have the event markers uh, posted on them. Once you've printed, you're done. It's simply that easy to do. Thank you for watching the video overview of the anorectal manometry system. If you have further questions, please refer to the owner's manual or call 1-800-333-1039 to speak with technical support. To order library approved supplies, call 1-800-522-6743.